Hi and welcome to Many Adventure. I wanted to say a brief word about safety uh, before we start the video. Uh, safety is very important. Uh, just want to remind everyone to be safe while they're working on their vehicles. Uh, be careful uh, if you're crawling under the vehicle. Make sure it's properly supported, and uh, you got jack stands under it. If you're going to be working around any flammable fluids, gasoline. Uh, make sure you're in a well ventilated area if you're going to be working with uh, brake fluid or anything like that be careful uh, if you get any of that kind of brake fluid on your exterior finish of your car if you don't immediately wipe it up it'll start peeling the paint off uh, just uh, just encourage everyone to think before you do something if something doesn't look safe stop re-examine what you're doing and make sure that what you're doing is safe um, always recommend uh, to wear a pair of mechanics wear gloves now you may see me not wearing them sometimes uh, that's because if I have to reach up in there and get a the proper feel for a bolt or a fastener and then just sometimes you can't grab it when you have gloves on uh, but just be careful if the engine's still hot make sure you let it cool down uh, of course never open the radiator while the engine's still hot uh, I know if you've worked on cars for a while a lot of these things you know, you're saying, well, why is he telling me all this? Well, someone may be watching this video that's new to working on cars, and they may not think about that. A lot of people have been scalded really badly by opening up a radiator. It seems like common sense, but uh, all the time you hear about those kind of things happening. So just want to bring safety to the forefront and think about that whenever you're doing something that you remember always safety first. And once again, thanks for tuning in to Mini Adventure. All right, well, welcome to part three of removing and installing the timing chain on the 2007 Mini Cooper Turbo S with the 1.6 liter engine in it. Uh, up to this point, we've got it ready. Then we removed the timing chain set. And now we're getting ready to get everything back together and uh, put the new timing chain back in and first thing we want to do is we're going to have to replace this crankshaft seal it is let me show you here real quick as you can see it does have a little bit of weeping around it so it is slightly leaking this car does have about 75,000 miles on it so I've already gone ahead and taken a, a small screwdriver and I've cleaned off around the seal real good um, because we need to measure how deep the seal is actually seated into the block so that when we replace it with the new seal we put it back in at the same depth. So before we get started here's some of the tools that we're going to need. We got a ruler, got the new seal, got a seal installer and we got a, a drill bit and a couple of screws that's what we're going to use to remove it of course a hammer for the seal installer and then some brace spray part, spray brake parts cleaner and paper towels to get to prep the uh, area before we put it in and I always like to put just a little thin coat of RTV around the outside of the seal to help keep it from leaking and of course our ruler to measure how how deep it is so let's go ahead and get started all right so I've got this ruler and all I'm going to do is I'm going to place it right up against the seal end up against the block and I'm going to try and get a measurement it's going to be a little bit difficult from this angle that I'm at to get a good reading so I may have to crawl under the vehicle and do it
Alrighty, I'm looking at approximately four millimeters that the seal is inside of the block. And that's from the surface of the seal. If you'll notice, there, there's a chamfer here on the block, but this is to the face of the block right here, to the face of the seal. I measured four millimeters, so we're going to put it back in at four millimeters. So in order to get it out, what we're going to do is we're going to take a drill and we're going to drill two small holes in the seal. Drill one on each side, approximately straight across from each other. All right, then we're gonna we're gonna drill a couple of small screws in here. To give us something to grab onto in order to pull pull it out. Now, this is just one way to take this seal out. There are other ways. There are actually specialized tools that you can use to pull the seal out. But I'm going to do it this way. Let me grab a hold of the grab a hold of the screw. That one didn't get in there very good. Of course, my light's in the way. Sorry, but there's just. <laughs> There's no real good way to grab this. And the key is you do not want to damage the sealant surface of you don't want to deal you don't want to damage this ceiling surface on the crank. So chiseling it out is not an option. So the chill manual was the one that suggested using the uh, screw method. Obviously that does not work quite like they said it will but I'm gonna grab a pair of vice grips and I'm gonna grab a hold of this edge right here and I'm gonna try to pull it out that way. Got that out of there. Well, not damaging it too much, but it doesn't matter since we're going to not be using it anyway. So now, I'm going to clean this surface up before we install the new seal. You got it down this far and you got the hub out. 
might as well do it. Besides, like I said, this one was leaking a little bit anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's clean. And there's also, that's where the engine case gasket is right here. So we got to recess the new one, five millimeters. So let me get some spray brake parts clean here, a paper towel, clean this up real good. Should be ready. It's a little bit of roughness there. So what I think I'll do is I'll take a little bit of emery cloth and I'll clean that up. It seems to just be right here on this bottom part. The upper part seems to be nice and smooth. So I'll get a little piece of 220 emery cloth and I'll clean that up a little bit so that the seal slides in a little easier and it's going to seal better. And of course, once I get done sanding this, I'll clean it again with some spray brake parts cleaner. starting to feel a lot better. Yeah. I'll go ahead and run this around the top too just to Make sure it's cleaned off. Get nice and smooth. Alright. Clean this opening again. Take the, the seal. I'll just put a skim coat. When I say a skim coat, I mean like you can barely see it's even anything on it. Skim coat. Not much at all. A little dab on the end of your finger is probably enough. And just work it around to you get us a light coat all the way around the, the seal. Wipe off any excess that might have gotten on the front. And what we're going to do, we're going to install this. that right into place like that. Try to kind of get it in there where it's going in kind of straight. So when you start hammering on it with the seal driver, it goes in straight. 
And of course, that's always the trick. So we've got the seal driver. I've already sized it. You want it big enough to go around the outside of the seal, but not so big that it's going to hit the, uh, the housing. So as we start getting it to where it's in, then we'll go a lot slower as we work on trying to get it down to the four millimeters that it needs to be recessed into the into the engine. So we'll center that on there. Alright, that's always the danger you run into. you got to pull it out and restart it over again you don't hammer on it exactly straight it won't go in straight of course where this is located is not ideal especially with this air conditioning line in the way but what are you gonna do I got to bleed down the air conditioner to change this get a different fix on my on my driver here and we'll start back up again all right well I finally got this thing in and it was a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be but um, I got it in there four millimeters all the way around uh, what I found is once I got it started in there it was actually easier to move it around by just grabbing it with my fingers and uh, and moving it and getting it where I needed it to be. Uh, the seal driver really didn't help me out that much. But it's in there now and now we're ready to get started with uh, getting the actual time of chain put in. So just for reference now that I've got everything out, I wanted to come over here and I want to show you what what it, the original time and chain looked like. As you can see, here's the pieces. Here, here's all the guide bolts, the tensioner, intake bolt, exhaust bolt, and here's the upper guide where the, you can see the bracket's broken and the one I'm holding here is bent. The original chain, original sprocket, and then here's a big piece of this. Now this happened to come out. I thought I had gotten everything but this actually came out uh, when I uh, was working on changing out the oil pan gasket and I pulled the oil pan off and looked in there and there was that big 
piece of plastic after I had already gotten all this out of here yesterday when I first took it apart. So you have to be real careful and make sure you check all of those oil passages that go from the top of the engine to the bottom. Because uh, I also found a little piece, I think it was this one right here. This piece right here was actually still in the, in the cylinder head. So take a really nice bright small LED light and look down in all those passages because you may find a piece like this stuck in there just like we found the pieces that were stuck inside the uh, oil pump. And then this is what the new setup looks like. This is what it looks like when it's brand new. As you can see when you compare the two, here's the old guide. I'll set it right next to it. As you can see, a lot of plastic is missing off of it. The two wings over here on the side that attach to here. And then you look at this guide here, there's a big piece missing off of the back of that. So, and then here's your, there's the old upper. Well, see, that's what your upper guide's supposed to look like. And all of that's gone, plus part of the bracket. So, but that's what the new stuff is going to look like. Alright, so now we're ready to start putting this thing together so that we can set it back in the vehicle. And let me get the, let me pause this for a second and get my tripod set up. Okay, <clears throat> now in order to start putting this thing together, well, these two pieces right here actually go actually snap together and if you look at it real close you have to rotate this out and front and back this snaps on okay and then whenever you rotate this it snaps past this part right here and this is what holds your your camshaft sprocket in place when you put put the new one back in so We'll drop the chain in, like so, and we take the crank sprocket, it goes down here, fits inside of the chain. That way, when we put it in there, it's going to look like that as we slide it down into the engine. And once we get it slid down into the engine at the top, then we'll, we'll hook the two camshaft sprockets in with their corresponding bolts. And then, of course, you have your two lower guide pins that we have to put in and then your upper guide pin and then the last thing we put in is going to be the actual tensioner itself and I actually tighten up the chain all right so we'll get everything in position to lower that in place and I'll be right back well now we're ready to, to slide the the timing chain guide cassette in I'll pre-position my exhaust cam and intake cam sockets and then um, I've got the bolts up here and then the upper guide pin then I've got the lower guide pins the crankshaft bolt and the crank hub down at the bottom I still got the motor mount in place because I'm going to tighten the crankshaft pulley down first and I, I want to have the, the engine securely uh, attached to the car when I try to tighten it down because I have to tighten it down pretty tight so what we'll do is we'll just slide this down inside the engine and it, the, the guides will slide down in, okay, then, we're going to clean the oil off of this before we put it in. Is 
and then we'll take the new bolt and we'll screw that in there just to hold it in place. Now we're going to tighten it all the way down. And we'll take the other socket and put it in place. So we just got that in there finger tight just to hold it in. Alright, so now we'll move the light here and we'll go down to the bottom here. And as you can see, the crank socket is in there. The sprockets right here, right where it's supposed to be. Now, remember when I lift that up to line it up, yeah, it's loose, but I don't have the tensioner in there, in there yet. So, I'm gonna get a, let me get a little bit of oil real quick. that seal up. Alright, and you can also see, you have to move the camera down a little bit, Zach. You can see right here, there's your, there's your guides. So we'll put the guide pins in. We're going to put the guide pins in first. the hub line it up with the crankshaft socket <clears throat> I'll make sure that the hub and the sprocket are clean there's no burrs or anything on it it's a compression fit and as tempted as you may be to a little lube on there to get it to slide in a little bit easier it's supposed to be dry so rambunctious with this but I'm just gonna tap on it a little bit with the, the rubber mallet to get it up in there and there it goes got a
and once you get the crank pulley lined up you got to remember that there are no keyways or anything like that but once you get everything lined up then your bolt will start to slide in and there it goes that's it's fully seated in there and ready to be torqued down as well as the lower guide bolts and now of course the we do have a little bit of slack in it of course because we don't have the tensioner on it but we have everything locked in place so we should be ready to started getting everything put back together we'll tighten up the, the lower guide bolts and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten down the the crank bolt to the step one of the torque specification and I'll do the same for the upper camshaft sprockets and then the manual says to rotate the engine four revolutions of the crankshaft and then put the locking devices back on and to ensure that the uh, camshafts and everything are in the proper position before uh, you torque everything down. So we're just going to do everything to step one to hold everything in place, and then we'll go from there. But we got to put the we got to put the guides in first. So uh, so we'll pause for a second while we get everything set up, and then we'll be back in just a second. All righty. Well, let me catch everybody up here. So far I've, I've gotten the, the crankshaft pulley installed and torqued down to 37 foot pounds and then another 100 degrees which I have no idea what that torque is but it is very very tight. And I've got the upper camshaft bolts torqued down to 15 foot pounds that's the stage one. Uh, I've got the the guide upper and lower guide bolts installed and torqued down to 22 foot pounds uh, and I also went ahead and put on the water belt water pump uh, belt thingy that that turns the water pump off of the drive belt uh, I went ahead and got that put in and those bolts are torqued down to 79 inch pounds um, I figured I would go ahead and put that in uh, once I got my guide bolts in, I went ahead and put it in and get that knocked out. So now I'm ready to go ahead and remove the locking device and rotate the engine four complete revolutions of the crankshaft and then put the locking device back in and make sure that everything is timed up correctly. The, uh, the camshaft should, should read uh, should read the uh, exhaust and intake should be straight up and the locking thing should be exactly like it is right now once we rotate it four, to four crankshaft revolutions clockwise as you're looking at the front of the engine from the passenger side of the vehicle so we're going to do that and then I'll be right back and let you know what my results are alrighty before we get started a uh, word on torque angle gauges uh, this torque angle gauge actually belongs to a friend of mine that I borrowed for this project. Uh, they're not very expensive and I'll probably end up buying one for myself, but uh, basically the way it works, let me turn my light on down here so you can see. <coughs> Is this going to go on to your crankshaft pulley down here? And then this is going to ride on this air conditioner suction line. And that's going to hold it in place. And as you turn it, the gauge rotates around to let you know to let you know how many degrees that you had to turn. Now for me, uh, for this crankshaft bolt, we had to turn it 100 degrees after you torqued it down to 37 foot-pounds. So I was able to... Uh, because of the cramped space here, 
I had to use a regular half inch drive ratchet and I got it all the way to 20 degrees. Then I was able to get my half inch breaker bar in there and that allowed me to get it over here to 80 degrees. For the final 20 degrees I actually had to take my go back to my half inch ratchet and then I actually worked it to where I could hook my half inch ratchet right here with a one inch the longest wrench that I had I put it on there and wedged it and that actually gave me the leverage I needed to get it to 100 degrees now that being said uh, not a small guy I weigh about 275 and <clears throat> it was about all I could do to get that sucker to 100 degrees so just letting you know to be prepared that uh, to get that thing to 100 degrees is going to take quite a bit of effort so uh, just wanted you to be prepared for that and uh, you got to get it to 100 degrees uh, there's no question about that uh, but you're going to have to be a little bit creative about it so I had to take a little bit of time off I had to go uh, do some work at my real job uh, so now we're <clears throat> ready to get back started on it this morning and where we left off was uh, I got the crankshaft bolt torque yielded down to 37 foot pounds plus 100 degrees and now I'm gonna go ahead and put my tensioner in uh, get that torque down and then uh, then I'll be ready to go ahead and rotate this engine remove the locking devices and rotate this engine around four degrees clockwise as viewed from uh, the passenger side and then we'll put the locking alignment tools back on and if everything's lined up then we'll be good to go we'll be ready to put everything back together uh, put the valve cover back on and hook everything back up and then hopefully we'll be able to start this thing up and it'll run so let me get everything set back up and I'll be right back all right well we're about ready to put this timing chain tensioner in but if you look down here you'll see that there's still the ceiling ring is still stuck on the the block uh, that has to be replaced so we'll just go ahead and take a screwdriver and knock that off of there and then we'll we'll put the new tensioner in there and when it gets tightened down to 48 foot pounds okay as you can see we got the locking devices removed in the back and I've got my uh, indicators in my homemade indicators and I made a a mark on the crankshaft so that I would know when I've made one full revolution uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make four revolutions and then we'll uh, we'll see where we're at we'll try to put the uh, alignment jigs back on and if everything lines up then we'll be good to go we'll be ready to put this thing back together Looks like our our indicators are back in place and our timing marks are straight up so now we'll go ahead and we'll put the uh, alignment jigs back in and we'll make sure everything's lined back up and we'll be uh, ready to go ahead and put our final torque yield on these two uh, camshaft sprockets and then we'll be able to we'll be ready to go back together with it so let me go and put it put all the uh, jigs back on and we'll be right back okay as i'm trying to put my alignment jig back on 
the exhaust cam fits on there just fine and the crankshaft fits on there just fine and as you can see all of the uh, the wires are straight across but if you look real close at the the intake alignment it's a little bit off so according to the Chilton's manual we need to loosen up the intake bolt for the camshaft sprocket and and line it back up and this is uh this is critical that's why we're we're taking a, a little extra time with this so what we'll do is we'll get the proper socket for this Again, this is why we need the 27 millimeter wrench. I'll widen this out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. And we're gonna put the 27 millimeter wrench right on the back of the intake camshaft. And then, as you can see, it's a little bit up on this side here. So what we wanna do is we wanna rotate the camshaft towards me in order to get it lined back up and then we'll go through this again we'll i'll tighten it down to the 15 foot pounds and then we'll rotate the crankshaft again four times and then we'll check it again and we'll keep doing that until everything lines up correctly so go ahead and loosen the loosen the bolt and we'll rotate the, the cam and as you can see it didn't take a whole lot, but on these engines, it doesn't take much for them to be out of tolerance. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this bolt in and this bolt in here. We're going to spin them down. To ensure everything's lined up, I already got my crankshaft locking pin in. Alright, we'll take that off. And I'll go ahead and tighten those down just a little bit. Doesn't take much. Alright. So now, go ahead and I'm going to torque this. back down to 15 foot pounds which is the first stage for for tightening this and securing the, the camshaft bolts which is one of the reasons why I didn't go ahead and, and tighten them down fully to a torque yield because if I had done that then I'd have to put new bolts on it <coughs> so and of course, you know, it's extremely difficult to get down in there, but I'm going to go ahead and put it down with a wrench. All right. Now, now we'll take the devices off. We'll rotate it again, <coughs> and we'll see where, where we're at. I'll be right back all right well here we go again one two three Shaft lock in. All 
and it didn't take much movement to to get it close. All right, that should be pretty close. I'm gonna crawl under here and put the crankshaft lock in. Sometimes you have to jiggle a handle on the ratchet as you're turning the crankshaft to get that locking pin to go in because it's really tight. All right. So now we'll put our exhaust on first. And you can see. And we'll slide it on into place and we'll put that screw in. Alright, and then we'll take our intake. And as you can see, this time we got it in there. We're going to go ahead and tighten it down anyway. There, it's tight down onto the onto the uh, onto this piece. So looks like everything is is lined up. So we'll tighten this down and see what it looks like. As you can see, we were able to get that to tighten down on there. So that means everything is, it should be timed up just right. And we'll go ahead and remove everything and get ready to start putting this sucker back together. All right, well now you can see that we're set up to go ahead and torque down the camshaft sprocket bolts. Uh, I've got the torque angle gauge set up. Uh, I've braced it against the cylinder head here. Um, and then I've turned the, the dial to zero degrees. And this camshaft, the intake camshaft, needs to be tightened down to 15 degrees initially, or excuse me, 15 foot pounds initially, and then 180 degrees. And then the exhaust camshaft bolt is 15 foot-pounds and 90 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let me put the camera back on the tripod here. I'll go ahead and zoom it in so you can see what we're doing here. Hopefully you'll be able to see the dial go around, but as, you, as the dial goes around you'll notice that the needle will move and it'll stay even though I stop turning it'll stay. So here, <clears throat> let me get my let me get my ratchet. When it's half inch drive. You'll find that most torque angle, angle gauges are half inch drive. So we'll start turning it, and as you can see. The needle moves even as you as you're turning it. The only thing I don't like about this is the fact that you have to take the upper motor mount off here in order to get a ratchet on it. 
So that's not, I don't like that, but we'll just keep turning it. You gotta be real careful not to bump the, the gauge up against anything or, or it won't spin. So that's the bad thing about having to take this mount off. All right, we're up to 40 degrees. So about 140 degrees to go and it's, uh, it's already pretty tough to turn. I don't know how many foot pounds it is, but it's already pretty tough. So I'm gonna have to come up with another way to, to do this so that I don't bump that gauge. So I'll be right back. Okay, well because we have to take the upper mount motor mount off, because it's in the way of the torque angle gauge, and that leaves the engine loose and allows it to move around, it'll interfere with the torque angle gauge. So what I did was I cut a piece of wood and I braced it up against the motor mount that's still left on the engine, and then down inside of here. Uh, I was about, for this one, I think it was about maybe six and a half inches is uh, how big it was and then I was once I did that I was able to it, it was firm enough where I was able to get my breaker bar in there to get some leverage and as you can see I got it all the way around over to 180 so we're done with this side and now we'll move on to the exhaust side uses the same socket so we'll put this on here it's always a challenge trying to get this to work but you can put it in in any way that's going to allow you to to brace it so you can rotate this around any way you want uh, once you get it into position. Like I've, I've got this all the way over here, like so. Then you go ahead and tighten it down. So now whenever it turns, this is gonna hold the gauge in place. And we'll go ahead and we'll rotate this back up to the zero. And on this bolt, it's already been torqued down to 15 foot pounds. So now we just have to take it 90 degrees. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you so you guys can see it. There we go. And so we'll just take this and we'll Put that back on zero. When I pick this thing up, it started turning. So we we'll want it to be as accurate as we can get it. All right. So now it's on zero. And we'll just turn it. And then we may have to end up getting another grip on it, which is one of the things with these is it's kind of hard to get in there sometimes. Thankfully this thing is plastic, so we'll just keep rotating it around to 90, and that's it. Camshaft sprockets are, are torqued down. Everything is in time. I can go ahead and remove my alignment kit from the camshafts and the crankshaft. And the installation part is complete. Now it's just a matter of going back together with it. Um, so, um, if you want, you can go ahead and, and watch the previous videos if you've forgotten how everything goes back together. Uh, but that's it. That's the completing the installation of the new timing chain. As you can see now, you can see how tight that chain is now. And that's what you want. Before, it didn't seem to have a whole lot of slop in it. But it had enough in there to hit this upper guide and 
break the, the bracket and just ruin everything. So now we've got it fixed and everything should be good. So once I get everything back together, I'll be back and we'll try to start this thing up and hopefully we'll get this thing fired up and ready to go. And once again, thanks for, for watching the video. Um, I hope that uh, you were able to learn something. I know I was able to, I was learning as I was going. I've never done this before. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is because most many owners have probably never tried to do this on their own. So I wanted to document this for those uh, many owners who are mechanically inclined and wanted to try this. So I wanted to go through it and hopefully everybody has uh, been able to learn something from this video. And like I said, I know I have and I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks a lot.